Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. In this episode we're looking at painting metal once again but this time the more dull metal that you can see on the barrel and trigger and so forth. Check the links in the description for more educational content such as this. Check out my buyer's guide for more details on that. Also there's a texture painting playlist so if you're having any difficulty with this then check out that playlist there's lots of answers in there as well. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again follow the links in the description. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and I've talked about painting brass metals here so I'm going to paint the barrel this time. Much the same sort of techniques so this will be a little bit quicker. This time I'll paint one section and time lapse the rest. Okay so let's go to object mode, select the object that I need back into texture paint mode, zoom in on that. And I've got my fill brush, it's set to multiply quite low strength so I can just darken this a touch I think, probably somewhere around there. And now let's go to the normal brush and add a tiny bit of variation. Let's just double check that symmetry is on, let's make sure of that. Set it to mix and paint in a few color variants and this is supposed to represent kind of reflections that are coming off the environment around it. So a nice variation in color and in tone at times as well. We might end up seeing a bit more blue at the top because that's the sky and just sort of darker colors, sometimes green at the bottom, but generally darker colors. Green obviously being grass and that sort of thing. And we've got a nice bit of variation there, that's great. Okay, let's go across to the multiply brush and start putting in the shade. I'll come back to the center, so I'll desaturate. Might give it a tiny bit of blue across that way and maybe a little bit more strength than we got there. Let's just see what that looks like. That's fine, but let's just make sure we're right in the center. So I'm doing a bit of ambient occlusion here. Just have to really watch out for these sort of things where you're going around the corner. So in fact, I'll undo that and get up the smudge tool a bit first. Smudge some of these areas in. So our color mixture works and then come to my multiply brush again. And from this angle, I can start sort of filling in some shading, ambient occlusion areas down here. Okay, that's good. I'm going to have to go to flat shading, so into object mode, right click, shade flat, and across the principled BSDF, then back to texture paint mode, and I can now shade in this area in here. Again, we just need that rough, because we're just getting the shape for now, and then we kind of tidy it up a little bit more later on. It might be difficult for you to see that, but I'm just marking out the line so when I go back across to smooth shading I'll be able to see it. While I'm here I'll put in my highlight as well so the screen brush up the tone a touch, make my brush a little smaller and just go around the edge here. You just have to watch out a little bit with this it can go a bit blobby as you can see there. So try and get a nice angle so you don't get too much blobbiness but you don't get too much stretching as well. So here you can see it's stretched a little bit around the corner, but it's not too bad. Whereas this one, it sort of curves inwards. So you just have to watch out for those sort of things. I'll smarten this up a bit more as I go through anyway. Okay, let's go back to smooth shading, back into object mode and actually change it to shade smooth as well. Back into texture paint mode. And we're getting there, we just need a bit more shading in some of these areas. So this has a combination of shading and ambient occlusion, so it sort of works its way up and gets a lot darker in that crevice down there. A bit more in these crevices and a little bit more from underneath here, I think. Okay, it's looking a bit dull and lifeless, so I might add a bit more color, a bit more blues in the shadows. There's not a lot in it really, just a little bit. It's a bit better. Now let's go to the highlights and see what we can do there. So back into the center and up to the top there with the screen brush. Just light across the top here to start with. Again, I'm sort of doing a little bit sort of wobbly Okay, and let's work on these sharper edges. We can put a bit more life into those now. Just gonna smudge these out. So I'll just push that across a little bit because it's looking 
like I say, a bit wobbly down the edge. I think we're a bit closer now. It's always going to look a little bit jaggedy because of the poly count, uh, but that's kind of important if you want to optimize for games. And from this sort of distance, it looks fairly circular. Fairly, anyway. Now let's work on the sort of sharper highlight that goes through the middle. The more shiny your object, the smaller and sharper this highlight is. When I say sharper, the brighter it is. So I'd say that's about right at the moment. You can't make it too reflective, otherwise it just doesn't work. It has to be a slightly dull metal. It's not looking too bad. I feel like it needs a touch more color variation. So I'm just gonna come across the yellows a bit. And I'm gonna just go across to the color brush this time so I don't affect the shading that I've put in already, but I'm just gonna put a bit of yellow in here as if it's reflecting some of that brass, and maybe it'll be reflecting a little bit there, and a bit of the browns and reds for the wood. It just gives it a little bit more life. Hopefully you can see that there. I'm gonna go across to the blues a bit, just to add a little bit in, as if we're getting some of the sky there. Might have gone a bit too far. Yeah, a little bit too far. Come across to the turquoise a bit more. And maybe there's a bit of a warm light, so I'll just give this a bit of color across here as well. That looks a little bit better, I think. I feel like it's just got a bit more life to it now. I might smudge that just a touch. I feel like it's just a little bit blobby. I could use the blur brush here, but the smudge brush should work because it's got that grain, so I can move it up and down a little bit. Remember the smudge brush, you lose your details a bit. So I'll have to go this, over this again in a second. But I just feel like it's a little bit too crisp and I want it to just be a little bit more smudgy and smooth and blended basically. So that's good, but I need to highlight again now. So back to the middle, back to screen brush. Let's go for the color dodge this time actually. It shouldn't make too much difference to the screen or dodge when you're using just white, but occasionally you can come up with a tiny bit of color variation in there because we have got a little bit in there now. And I'm actually trying to make it look a little bit scratchy as if it's following a grain of the metal. Okay, really, let's push the highlight across here a bit as if that's really catching the light on that point there and here as well. You don't want to push it too far with these highlights. It can suddenly lose its metallic look if you're not careful. So just a few small highlights here, as if the metal's warped in places. So very similar to the brass in many ways, in the way we build this up. And I think it's just about working. I want to put a little bit more shadow at the bottom there, I feel like. Maybe a, a lot towards the blues, just to bring out a little bit more colour. Yes, I think that's a bit more richer now, and I think that works a bit better. Just going to put a bit more in here. Okay, so let's work on a few details. I've got my multiply brush still on but I'll bring it in a bit less saturated and let's have a few scratches and notches. I'll bring the strength up a little bit so it can be a bit faster. And let's have some of these dots and splodges. So these are corrosion bits in the metal and warps in the metal and things. Maybe have some big ones around the place. Careful of the symmetry, of course. It's looking fairly bleak at the top here, so I'm gonna turn the symmetry off. Just remember that you've done this and put in a few variations up here as well. Don't need to worry too much about the bottom. It's hardly gonna be seen. So we'll kind of leave that as it is. Okay, back to symmetry. And let's, let's tidy some of these up and go across to the screen. So I put in all my shading first and then go across to the screen, maybe put a tiny bit of warmth into it and then do those highlight bits a little bit less strength but a tiny bit of a bigger brush alt middle click to center your viewport if you need to shouldn't have done that because it's not mirrored that bit just check that what you're working on is mirrored Okay, I think that's working reasonably well. Let's just go to the central section now and sort out these bits that aren't mirrored. Okay, so that's painting that metal bit in the middle there. 
So I'll go onto the other sections into object mode and I've joined them together this time. I'll speed this section up a fair bit because it's a lot of repetition, but I'll talk through a few ideas and a few pointers. And there is a problem I have with some UV maps later on, so I'll talk through that. So I start off with the shading. It gets very sort of blobby and smudgy, so I go back to the smudge brush a lot and sort of tidy it up. Offering a bit of color variation as well. You can see a bit of extra purple in there. I'm not sure why it looks so purply, but um, I kind of go over it and over it again and just kind of get rid of those colors. But it's a good idea to have a base color like that in there as if it's the reflection from the environment around. And that's what you have to think when you're painting with metals. You've got to think of the reflection aspect as well as that sort of color aspect that it has, that sort of base color of gray. Once I've got some basic shade in, I go across to object mode, go to shade flat, and then back in with the principled BSDF and find the highlights. I miss a couple, so I have to go back to this in a moment. But you kind of get the idea of uh, going around all the edges so you can actually see them when you're in flat shading mode. So here we are, back to object mode, back to flat shading, and then I can go in and start doing some more shadows in these areas and crevices. A few times I did sort of draw over the other shapes that were there. You can see it just happening there. And you have to watch out for that. So when it's not all one object, you might actually be painting on the back side of one of your objects. So just, just be careful not to overlap your objects. That's why I like to separate them. Then when I'm painting on one object, it's not painting on another at the same time. Then I go across to the highlight brush. I call it the highlight brush, the screen brush, and just paint in a sort of dull highlight to start with, and then the sharp highlights after that. And you can see these sharp highlights going in here, nice and shiny, nice and bright, so it's sort of quite shiny metal. But you have to be careful making it too shiny. I alluded to that earlier, but if it is too shiny, then you would expect to see a lot more reflection. And when you move around the object, you'd see a lot of reflection moving. So you can't do that with uh, hand painted textures. So you have to sort of insinuate the shininess and therefore you have to give it a bit of variation, uh, roughness and kind of distortion to those reflections. So you can't have obvious reflections. If you ever try baking a glossy map that's of a really shiny object, you'll see what I mean. This sort of middle bit is slightly different because it has sharper edges in a way because it's not curved. So you can go to town a little bit more on those very sharp edges, um, as you can see here. Again, giving them a little bit of wobbliness. So it's sort of warped, bashed metal. And that warped, bashed metal is there on purpose because again, like I say, if you've got really shiny, clean materials, one, they don't have a lot of character because they haven't got that sort of bashed in scrapes and notches and all those sort of things. But two, you can't see those reflections properly when you move around so it doesn't really work. Here you can see my multiply brush has a little bit of color in it so you can see a bit of color type reflections coming from the inside of the barrel and really going to town on the bottom highlight there because the sun is coming from the top obviously so that's where you're going to see those highlights. And again, you paint in those sort of duller highlights and then go in with your sharper brush, uh, which is stronger uh, for the more sort of sharp highlights. Hopefully that makes sense. And once you've done that, you can go in and add a bit of character to these areas. So scratches, notches. I always start off with the multiply brush. So just sort of paint them in, sketch them in, then go across to the screen to add those kind of highlights. But I'm going over all these meshes uh, with the multiply brush, just adding in dinks and warps and um, notches and so forth. And now I'm going in with the screen brush to add in those slight highlights as if the light is catching the edge of it. And increasing that highlight down the edge there and increasing the highlights just on the edges of all the objects. Adding a tiny bit more variation in places where I think it's a bit dull and then turning symmetry off so I can go across the top a bit there and just add in some variation once again and then across the screen brush and add those highlights. Turn symmetry off for the shadows on one side. Be careful of this, don't paint some shadows in and then realize you've got shadows on the other side. And that is why we can't really have a mirror modifier for some of these UVs. So if you wanted to utilize mirror modifiers then you would have to uh, mirror some of the objects, uh, unwrap them, and then uh, un sort of apply your mirror and then unwrap those. Hopefully that makes sense again. It's a bit confusing, but generally I try not to bother uh, mirror mirroring my objects because of that reason. I want to be able to paint one side different to the other. 
on these bolts. I made them just a bit darker and kind of quickly did them. Um, you could see there also, I had to go to overlays and see why it wasn't painting. That's because their face direction was out for some reason and didn't check that. Now this one I had loads of problems with. You can see when I'm painting, hopefully you can see it anyway. I thought it was because the origin was out and the mirror wasn't working, but I'm kind of painting and it's going over different areas. So hopefully you can see here, I've slowed it down a bit, that these two faces are overlapping each other. So I'm gonna to have to sort that out. I've selected just that area and then I'm going to unwrap just those faces. So you can see the unwrap comes out through the whole shape. I move them into position so they've got a, a sort of spare slot as it were. Move them into a space and then fill it in again. And you'll be able to see in a moment that when I fill it in, I still have a slight issue. So we come in here, we go to the fill brush and we start filling it in. But there's still this tiny issue at the top here and that's because my UV unwrap has got this seam across here, which it needed earlier, but it doesn't now. So I get rid of that seam and then when I fill it in, you'll be able to see that it doesn't have the same problem. So you can see there, it has a little seam, unwrap it again and there's no seam anymore. And now when I fill, it works. So watch out for islands that are really close to each other and seams that are kind of uh, sticking out where you don't need them. You might get slight anomalies. Hopefully if you see that, you'll get a rough idea of what that is and you might need to go back to your unwrapping process. I probably spent a little bit too much time on such a small object. It's very easy to get a bit blind to the distance you're working at. So like this uh, scrape in there, uh, when you zoom out, it's a really small, fine scrape, and I'm probably going too much detail. So I thought about that for the next one and went a bit more sort of blurry, I suppose. I started being a lot more simple with my brush strokes rather than trying to get lots of detail. And the same for that bolt just down here. There's no need to go to really fine details, so I've hardly added any of the detailed elements that I have in other places, like notches and scratches and so forth. The sort of trigger guard was a little bit of a pain. Um, trying to get that uh, precise was quite awkward in a strange way. And I, I think I added too much of a highlight. Uh, because it's underneath the gun, you won't have as much of a highlight as you will in other places. So you can see me adding a bit of white there and it just looks a little bit odd. So what I do eventually after smudging it out a bit, uh, so taking out some of the detail, I also added a multiply to it so went to the fill brush added a bit of multiply just to darken it as you can see here and then it seemed to work and blend in a bit better much simpler with the trigger just a small highlight and there we go so we're certainly getting there now there is still the glass at the front of the scope to do and i'll probably want to talk about or i'm assuming people want to hear about exporting and in game engines and what you do with that sort of thing let me know how you're finding it comment below with any thoughts and questions you might have Thanks for all the support, much appreciated, those that watch an advert, those that sign up to my Patreon, and those that donate. It really is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.